It is difficult to hold a memorial service for people who aren't dead. I've never attempted one before. But in the vastness of interstellar space, at relativistic speeds, anyone who isn't here with us is effectively cut off from us forever. So we must attempt to mourn their loss, or our loss of them, so that we can move on with our lives in some fashion. The tragedy here is that there are so many. We lost 57 people. 59 if we lump Marcus Flint and Arash Amadi with them, though their circumstances differed. Over the coming year, I'd like to do a separate service for each of them to do their memory justice. But today we have to deal with them collectively. All of us lost family. Many of us lost close family. I lost one of my daughters and my sister. Our mayor lost her father. Those wounds will never fully heal, but maybe it will help to imagine them making it back to Earth and being given a hero's welcome. They'll be the first interstellar explorers to make it back, and they'll bring back stories, our stories, tales of their lives with us that'll be repeated the world over and inspire box office record-shattering holotainments. Whether you believe in a literal heaven or not, our loved ones are on their way to a beautiful blue planet where they'll be welcomed, looked after and safe. Mayor, you wanted to say a few words? Yes, thank you. I want to let all of you know that I feel what you feel. We mourn together. I'm going to have to ask a lot of you because we're short-handed and still in existential danger, not because I'm heartless. To consecrate our loss, I ask each of you to come by the temple later with a token of your loved one to offer as a sacrifice for the fire. Quietplease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 18, Fallout. Yes, Doctor? What can I do for you? Mayor, I've reached a difficult decision. Go on. I'm submitting my resignation for medical practice. I can help train my replacement. I can continue doing some medical and scientific research, but I'll no longer be our doctor. I'm sorry to hear that, Doctor, if I can still call you that. May I ask what brought this on? What happened to Amadi was my fault. As far as we know, he's still alive. Didn't you hear he stowed away with Marcus Flint? He suffered a fate worse than death. And it's my fault he was able to sabotage us. We wouldn't have been able to resist the invasion anyway, and you helped us repel them. And your nanobot idea may have saved us. I mean, they're not after us yet. Or it may not have done anything. Or if successful, it may get the people we left behind stranded so they can't be taken home to Earth. Or it may even get them killed in retribution. But that's not the point. The point is, I didn't care enough about my patient to treat him properly. It's just one lapse. <laughs> Go shake hands with Eva Hernandez if you want another example. That was just an impossibly difficult decision that had to be made in the moment to save Peters. I wish it were, but it wasn't. It was a really easy decision. Second nature to me, from so much practice thinking of people as just means to ends. These two situations are just symptoms of the real problem that's been growing within me for a long time. Oh? When I was young, I really cared about people, and my experiments were meant to help them. But somehow, along the line, I just got 
so wrapped up in the experiments that the people became just a means to further my experiments. I stopped thinking about patients as human beings. And when their ailments weren't novel, I just see them as boring distractions. <laughs> that scares me. I don't know why it didn't scare me before, but it does now. If I were younger, maybe I'd try to plow through it and keep going while trying to work on myself. But I'm in my 60s. I need to take a step back from work and rediscover my humanity. Can you recommend any potential replacements? Uh, Sergei Kocherkin or Yen Singh would be good. Ideally both to give you some redundancy. They both apprenticed for me a while back, so they've got a head start. I wish we had enough people for redundancy. A lot of people are going to be doing a lot of multitasking as it is. We've lost so many. I'm partially responsible for that. I'm sorry. I don't blame you, Doctor. You can call me John now. That's going to take some getting used to. Sorry, John. But it looks like this is urgent. I've got to take it. No problem. Mayor, I'm sorry to say we're not out of the woods yet. <sighs> it would have been too much to hope for. Are they coming after us then? Their asteroid is decelerating hard now. They may be turning around to head for Earth. But they've sent a little parting gift after us. A hunk of rock. We think it's a relativistic kill vehicle, Mayor. Can we outrun it? No. Outmaneuver it? It has an engine on it that's continually accelerating it. So we can't just step out of the way and expect it not to follow. Being so much smaller than us, it's way more maneuverable than we are. So what'll happen if it hits us? How big an explosion are we talking? That depends on how fast it's going. I've got a preliminary estimate based on the current distance, course, and rate of acceleration. It's going to reach 80% of light speed. We're not that far from them yet. Wouldn't it hit us before it got up that much speed? Because it's so small, it accelerates a lot faster than us. But you'd still be right if they hadn't created more distance before launch and then used a purposely curved course to allow more time to accelerate. That's why I say it's a relativistic kill vehicle and not an intercept vessel. That and anybody on board would be dead from the kind of acceleration it's doing. Anyway, there are two possibilities with the impact. It could fragment Matilda into a million pieces, or it could leave her mostly intact with a huge crater and molten hot for centuries. Either way, we're all dead at the moment of impact, so it's not our problem. How long do we have? 20, 25 hours, probably. I'll get you a more precise number soon. Chief Flint, I'm putting you in charge of coming up with a plan. It should go without saying that all people and resources are at your disposal and that none of us will be getting any sleep. How are you feeling, Salish? There's that question again. It's important. I can't believe they're gone. That we'll never see our kids again. How are you so composed about it? I remind myself that Annika and Judy are in a better place now. Are they? They're safe. They're not about to be blown to smithereens like we are. They're headed back to Earth, where they'll probably live long, happy lives and tell our grandchildren all about us. Doesn't it bother you that we'll never see them again? Of course it does. Frankly, I'm feeling a bit resentful about your role in that. What? It's your fault we're not over there with Annika and Judy right now. Your fault we rebelled and took back Matilda and ran off. You could have cooperated. Could have just kept out of it. I was fighting for our freedom. Call it what you will. The result is the same. Your actions cut us off from our kids forever. Not to mention probably getting us killed shortly. Dr. Stone! Not anymore. I heard. May I sit here? 
Sure, Hernandez. It's 120 yuan for the veggie burger? That went up fast. It's the burger shortage. So many of the people who were growing our food lost, they can't harvest much, and the law of supply and demand does the rest. Huh, I suppose you could help out there. Well, maybe. A different kind of work might do you good. Well, consider it. Say, not to be indelicate again, but isn't it kind of hard to eat a burger with one hand? A bit, but the prosthetic helps hold it. You know, there are options that let you control it via neural interface. I'm not that eager to have someone cut my head open at the moment. Especially you. No offense. Yeah, none taken. Do you have any other plans? Not really. You should see Dr. Peters. I will. Look, what you did was wrong, and nothing you can say will bring my hand back. But the fact that you've realized it and taken responsibility means I think I can try to forgive you. If I see you really change. Realizing there's something wrong with my emotional responses to situations is a lot easier than correcting it. I wish we still had the ship. Why? With the right fuel load, it could be fast and maneuverable enough to steer into a collision with the relativistic kill vehicle. We do have a ship, Chief. What? Two ships, in fact. Oh, yeah. The ones left behind when the aliens left. I wonder why they were left. Maybe they were supposed to be piloted by the ones we killed. Or maybe they're broken. Let's hope not. What's up, sis? Marissa, you're our languages expert. I need you to go out to one of the alien shuttles with Apprentice Tojo and see if you can figure out how to fly it. Right now? Our lives probably depend on it. Okay. Problem almost solved then? Hopefully this is a step on the immediate problem. But just intercepting this one rock won't be enough. They just send another. And if we pull this off, we can only do it twice. Somehow we'll have to make them think they got us. Or make them think we've got our own RKVs we're using to stop theirs and might aim at them if they persist, which shouldn't be too hard since they were already worried that's what we'd be up to. Peace via mutually assured destruction or the bluff of it? Worked for Earth. I'd hate to bet our lives on them making a stupid mistake. But maybe their pondering the matter will buy us some time. And time will buy us distance, and distance could bring us safety. A little rock can only eat so much of itself for fuel, and it might take them a lot longer to launch a bigger one. Computer, calculate maximum kinetic impact of a relativistic kill vehicle similar to the one currently pursuing us if launched from the other asteroid a week from now. Choose size and acceleration for maximum damage, but constrain size to plausibly be an unnecessary chunk of the other asteroid. Assume we're trying to evade at our maximum acceleration, and their acceleration remains as at present. Maximum impact, 1.25 times 10 to the 16th joules, or 3 megatons of TNT. That's a moderately sized nuclear bomb, and they know where our base is to target. We have another ship to block that one, though, and we can evacuate the upper levels and work on shielding. Well, get on out there and help Marissa so we can make these calculations matter. I feel like a three-year-old who sneaked into a fusion plant trying to understand how all the controls work before I know how to read or what any of the technical background is. I feel like a kid in a candy store holding an all-you-can-eat pass. This is amazing technology. So much to learn and try to copy. It won't be much use if we're all dead. So keep your mind on the task at hand. Yes, Chief. From the layout, I believe this section would all be movement controls. That agrees with my interpretation of the glyph patterns. But how do we fly? 
I don't think there's any way to figure this out in time without experimenting. We'll have to take risks. And hope we don't get ourselves killed, yeah. I'm thinking this one looks like a launch button, you? I'll go along with that. Brace yourself, here goes. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. This looks like a holographic map of local space. There's the Tauceti system. Here's Matilda. Hmm, maybe it's asking us to choose a destination. Pick something really close. Okay, I think it's selected. And confirmed. But we're still not moving. Let's try to think like we're hexapods with trunks. What control would we want to use for takeoff? Maybe to control the speed? What about this long cylinder? Looks like there's room to raise and lower it, and it'd be easy to grasp with a trunk. Give it a try. It's on bottom now, maybe that means landed. That's done it, we're moving! good news and bad news. What's the good news? We figured out how to fly the shuttles and we think we can crash one into the oncoming RKV at a sufficient speed. That's fantastic. And the bad news? We haven't figured out how to automate it. So you mean... Yes, somebody's gonna have to pilot it. You can't set the course and then jump out? We can't get it to automatically respond to the RKV's course corrections, and it's sure to try to evade an impact. If you could give us another day, we could probably figure that out. I can't do that. We'll all be dead tomorrow. This has to launch in the next hour to give us a chance to escape serious damage from the relativistic debris field. Then one of us has to die, Mayor. Your choice who? Understood. Give me a few minutes. We've lost so much. Every one of us has lost so much. We're irrevocably separated from our families. Some of you are asking yourselves, was it all worth it? You all know the latest existential threat we face. We think we found a way to save our world, but one of us has to die to do it. It's up to me to make that choice, but there was only one real option. I can't send another person on a suicide mission. This is something I have to do myself. So I'm saying goodbye to all of you, friends, family, and colleagues. If our time wasn't so fleeting, if we were counting down the minutes to our destruction, I'd tell each of you personally what you've meant to me over the years. But the clock is ticking, so I have to tell all of you at once. May we meet again in another life. Welcome, Mayor. I've only got a minute. I suppose it would be redundant to ask you to make a sacrifice. Maybe, but I've brought one anyway. It's a brave thing you're doing. Take care of those people for me. I'll try. Goodbye, Mayor. Got it moving upward. Now what do I do? In the panel on your right, press the middle button. Okay. Do you have the holographic display up? Yes. Did you find the RKV on it? I see. Ah, uh, yeah. That's gotta be it. Pinch the spot to select. Got it. I think I'm on course now. You're going to need to keep watching, Matt. It's going to be making evasive maneuvers to try to avoid you. I see it. Just made one already. How do I counter that? Just find the new location and pinch it again. Okay. And I just keep doing that? Yeah, that's all. As long as you can keep in front of it. Seems like it'd be so easy to automate. 
I'm sorry, Mayor. It should be. We just didn't have time to figure it out. This is all so senseless. I know you did your best, and things could be a lot worse. We're very lucky you figured out this much, or everyone else would have been dying with me. Still, I'm so sorry. Don't be. Please. You must be getting pretty far from us now. I can hear the message delays getting longer. I can see it out the window now. It's coming up fast. Just keep it in front of you. Don't let it get around you. This is going to work. I've got it centered. Good luck to all of you back there. Do great things with the full lives I'm hoping despise you. Wow. Here it comes. Impact confirmed. Force change initiated. Looks like we'll be clear of any significant debris. Congratulations, us. We win. Now, why don't I feel like going to a victory party? Do you have a moment for a quick briefing, Mayor? That's acting, Mayor. Whatever, sir. Go ahead. As you can feel, we've got our acceleration up to 0.2G. Chief Flint thinks we can do better soon by deploying all of the backup engines. That's great. Tell her I'll lend a hand with design enhancements after we organize an election so I can quit this temp job. And what's the latest from astronomy section? Chief Lawrence reports no sign of any more RKV launches from the alien asteroid and no change in their course away from us. No news is great news there. I wonder what's going on over there, though. Maybe they believe we have our own RKVs now. Maybe they didn't look too closely at the debris and assumed we were destroyed. Maybe the nanobots worked and incapacitated their offensive capabilities. Maybe they just didn't have more than one RKV available to fire. And maybe it takes a long time to produce a new one. I suppose we'll never know. There's a lot of things we'll never know. Frustrating, isn't it? But that's life. Can't expect everything to tie up perfectly in the end. Tau Ceti looks so small already, almost like any other star. I wonder what Dad's up to back there. And a rash. I hope he's himself again and they're not at each other's throats. Think we'll ever know? By the time we rebuild the communications dish, we'll be out of range of their tiny ship's transmitter. I don't think we'll ever hear from them again. I wish we could do something. We can imagine. All we can do is imagine and hope. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 18, Fallout. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerim. Mayor Renata Matombo is Kathleen Lee. Astronomy Chief Lawrence is James Lorenz. Mission Specialist Salish Peters is David Loftus. Apprentice Tojo is Gwyneth Knight. Eva Hernandez is Lindsay White. Chief Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. Communications Chief Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. The computer is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Jenny. 
The priest is David Nagel. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music, courtesy freesound.org, a soundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.